guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking all about my investment portfolio, I'm going to be doing a full run through of everything I'm holding at the moment, how it's performing, what I regret buying, there's one in there, there's a real doozy, I definitely regret it, and lots more information, keep on watching because there's going to be a little bit of a surprise halfway through this video if you're wondering about how to invest or just some tips about investing, there's something in the middle here for you guys. Don't forget to watch my previous videos which are all about what I've learned in my time of investing and kind of how to set up an account and the basics of investing. I will leave those linked in the description bar. I've done a few videos like this before but I haven't done my investment portfolio for a really long time. So I'm gonna be showing you exactly what I'm holding at the moment and yeah, some of the doozies. <laughs> so I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Do think about subscribing if you're new to my channel. I'm Lara, if this is the first time you're finding me, and if you found it useful, then do give it a like so that I know that you guys want to see more videos like this about my investments. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So before we start, let's just get the caveats out of the way. I'm not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. Go and do your own research and make sure you are confident in what you're doing. Don't just copy what you see other people doing online and just know that your capital is at risk with all investments and it is not a guaranteed result so go and do your own research. So you guys will know if you've been around here a long time I have been saving and saving and saving and I have kind of got to the point now where we are able to put more money into our investments for our future and actually what I'm really passionate about is making our money work for us in the future so whether that is our ISAs or our pensions or our stock holdings it's about actually making that money work because money doesn't just grow if it sits in the bank let's be real like it's ridiculously low at the moment for savers and for me making our money work and just you know, making it grow is really, really enjoyable and just sensible for us to make sure that we have, you know, in the future that we have our financial goals are reached. So we want to make our money work for us and we want to grow it. Now in the bank, you're probably looking at 0.01%. <laughs> so even if you have a really bad time with your stocks and shares, you probably aren't going to lose that much money day to day unless there is a big correction or you know a big issue with the stock market. So I'm going to go through each of my holdings. I have got a lot of shares. Talk about what I have got so far that is doing the best. So let's start, let's start with the good stuff and then we'll work our way down to the very, very bad stuff. But personally, when there's a dip, that's when I want to buy. So for me, it being down is not a problem, but you do need to be aware that this is your money at risk and you could lose it all. The key point I would say is only invest what you can afford to lose. That's like my main, my main thing. Like just don't invest more than, if you need it for your house deposit, don't go putting it in shares because you need that money immediately. And if the shares drop and you want to take it out because you have to buy a house, you're going to be at a loss. So this money is there that you don't need immediately. Uh, if you want to get involved in, in buying shares, I'm going to leave some links in the description bar and you can get a free share up to a value of £100 or dollars, I think it might be. And we both get a free share. So some of these I'm going to tell you about are free shares. So thank you for anyone that has I use my link in the past. I'll use free trade for your free share because I don't think Trading212 are actually giving free shares out at the moment. Feel free, check it out. Let me know if they are because I don't know if they've started it back up again, taking on new people. Uh, but use free, tra free trade and you will get yourself a free share as well to start you on your way. And even if you just want to hold on to that and then sell it, get your, you know, put a pound in, get a ten pound. 20 pound, 30 pound share, take it out. That's on you, like just take it out if you want or just leave it in there if it's not something you need to, you, know, you need the money for. So this has been a real learning curve over the last 15, 16 months. I've really enjoyed learning about it. I've watched podcast, watched YouTube videos, listened to podcasts, read books, just been in the community of, you know, understanding it a little bit more. So definitely do that if you want to invest and just learn a little bit more. Obviously the whole Bitcoin and um, cryptocurrency is something I'm not going to talk about here. I have got Bitcoin from 2017 and that's when I first invested and I won't get into that into this video because that is a whole whole thing. <laughs> so as I said though, it's going to be a surprise in this video and that is that I am now going to be sharing with you guys Jen from Mama Furfa who I love her channel so 
easy to understand, so much knowledge. She's quit her corporate career. In fact, we used to do pretty much the same job and she now is full-time into YouTube and her courses. And I know you guys love her as well. Over on my Facebook group, Budget Best Life, lots of you guys talk about her. It's Jen from Mama Furfa and she is gonna be sharing her top three tips for investing. So take it away, Jen. Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer from the Mama Fuffer channel. Thank you so much for having me on your channel, Lara. I'm really excited to share with you my top tips for new investors. So let me kick off by saying I've been investing for a number of years now. My channel, I talk about personal finance, investing and success entrepreneurship. So we talk about side hustles as well, creating money in our lives. But investing is one of those key practical money skills you have to have as part of your overall strategy. So my first top tip is simply start doing something today. With money, habits are all about getting the confidence in your habits and it being a lifelong skill. It doesn't matter the amount you want to start with, simply start today. If you believe long-term, you want to be an investor. Now, why we say start today as well is based on compound interest and time and all these wonderful things that will help your money grow depending on what you pick to invest in, that means the sooner you start, the longer you can leave it and the bigger the amount can grow to. Obviously, it depends on how much you're investing, but it really can be small amounts over a long period of time, say 20 or 30 years, can really add up. To give you an example here, I recently shared on my channel how everyday people can become millionaires and it really is starting small. Say from the age of 18, you might only have to invest about 100, 150 pounds a month consistently until you want to retire to be a millionaire. Now, the older you get, the larger the sums of money that you'll need to invest every month to hit that mark but it really all is about starting today and doing something and then as your confidence grows, you can add to those amounts. That leads me on to my second top tip and I want you to make sure you're investing long-term if you're a beginner in particular. Do not be caught up by fear of missing out on the latest trend. Maybe you've been on Instagram and Facebook and people are talking about Dogecoin or this index fund or this company. Don't be swayed by what is happening right now. Get that backbone of funds and things that you are confident in are gonna grow long term. So I would actually say start by looking at index trackers as your first port of call. These are super simple ways to invest and it's almost like buying a tiny piece of many companies all in one investment. So for example, your classic index funds perhaps are the S&P 500, the FTSE 100, and these are country specific lead tables effectively. So it's the top 500 companies in the US or the top 100 companies in the UK. And that means when you buy that index fund one payment, you're buying into all 500 companies or all 100 companies effectively. It's gonna track their performance overall. So it's super simple to actually start investing, but get that backbone of the long-term investments that you don't need to keep checking, you don't need to stress about, that you know long-term are going to grow in your favor. And my third top tip for new investors is make investing part of a holistic money strategy. Too often I see people wanting to invest because they think it's gonna make them rich quick, or you know they want to make an income within a year or something really small like that. Make it as part of just something you do, another habit overall with your money. So lock down what habits are important to you. Is it saving? Is it also investing? Is it giving a portion of your money to charity to help others? What are the long-term habits you see yourself having when you have any amount of money, whether you're wealthy or you're on your way there? Lock down those habits and make it part of your overall strategy, not as simply a way to escape the nine to five or get rich quick. So if you're a brand new investor, I hope that's been really insightful for you. As somebody who's been doing it for a little bit longer, these are my best tips to make sure you don't make any mistakes, but certainly you can get in the right mindset about investing from as soon as possible. Thank you so much for that, Jen. Really, really helpful. If you're new to investing or you just wanted a little bit more information from somebody else, I will be featuring it in her channel very soon, so keep an eye out for that one and go over to subscribe to her channel. I'm sure you would love it as much as I do. I'll leave the link in the description bar for you guys. So, here I am, different outfit, in fact a different month, different haircut. I went to edit my video and a couple of weeks had passed and everything had changed so I was going to stick to it just to show how much it fluctuates but then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it again. So here we are and actually I 
took way too long talking about each individual share, why I bought it, what's happened to it, what market influences has happened. And to be honest with you, it's a lot. So you'll be able to see here on the screen my portfolio. So I'm holding £5,866 and it is currently up almost 16%, which is obviously really good news. So I thought I would just show you a few of, well, let's go through it really, really quickly. I'm gonna try not to talk for too long because yeah, it was really long. So let's go. AMD, uh, this one's actually gone back up again. This one's being really good at the moment. When I filmed this, it was it was back in June and it was like 85. So up 16% um, with an FX impact of minus 3.3. So that one's doing really well, I think because of not being able to get hold of things. Obviously, if you have had to try and get hold of any parts or tools or anything like that, everything is so hard to get hold of at the moment. So that was the same for AMD, but it's obviously recovering a bit now. So that's why I think it's doing better. Alibaba was just a nightmare. I went in hard on those and I did get banned a little bit. So they are down 20.5%, which is not good but it might, may well be supply stuff again like that. Uh, Amazon, this one is just the pain of my life. I don't know why. It's one of these shares, if you bought it back in 2014, I guess. Um, oh, look at it, it's been up and down like a yo-yo. But yeah, back, um, I don't know if I can, oh yeah, here we go. So 2014, 2015, 2016. Yeah, you would have, for 300 pounds and now it's, like three and a half thousand pounds. So I think it's probably not a great time, but obviously when they start bringing in new technologies and they start flying our goods everywhere, then it will probably go up and when they bring out new products. American Airlines is doing really well, up 50%. Uh, that was actually a free share, so thank you. If you have done, if you've used the link below, you would have got one of these free shares as well. And hopefully yours is doing really well, depending on which one you got. Uh, but as I said, there'll be a couple of links in there to sign up if you want to have a look. Uh, Anglesey Mining, I thought would do a lot better than it has because mining is kind of a focus area at the moment that I'm really interested in. Uh, but at the moment, it's not doing so well. It's actually down 30%, which is not good, but I've not got a huge holding, so it's not too disastrous. Uh, Apple is actually doing well. It's up 10.5% now, so I'm pleased with that, but I haven't got a huge holding because they are so expensive. AstraZeneca is up 16.5%. I didn't know, maybe it might go a bit higher, but it's doing okay, so I'm happy with that one. B&M, I bought this when, I bought this, uh, when was that? So I bought my first shares in April 2020 when all the shops were shut, and I just thought people are gonna be wanting to spend their money, but they can't go to retail stores, whereas shops like this and Home Bargains were open, and it's done really well, it's up 68%. As with all of these, when you do well, you wish you bought more, but here we are. Uh, BAE Systems. That one is up 10%, I'm happy with that one. I've not got a huge holding, it's only 26 pounds, but obviously it's doing quite well. Bank of America, that one's up 33.5%. Biogen, I bought this not so long ago and I'm really disappointed with how it's doing actually. In fact, I probably bought it, let's have a look, if I bought it at the worst time possible. I bought this in um, June the 7th. And you're, if you're not used to this platform, I might be going a bit fast, but I don't want to bore you if you are. Uh, so yeah, oh look, when I bought it, when it was at its highest, so that was good, good one Lara. Uh, but yeah, that's still, you know, it's not horrendous. Um, Black Rock Mining, uh, that's down 10%, really surprised at that actually. Blink Charging, they they are up 12.5%, so I'm pleased with that one. Boohoo, that's been up and down recently, it's not really kind of, yeah, I'm, it's, it's okay, it's still up 12%, but I'm surprised with how much it's going up and down. Bumble, when this was floated, I, I went in hard and it was a big mistake. I went in at, how much did I buy? 230 pounds, which is ballsy for me, if I if I, I have to say, to be honest. Uh, but I just thought it would be great. And then it's just gone down and down and down. So that wasn't such a good purchase, but it's gone up from the last, the last one it was down like 50% so it's doing okay. Carnival is doing amazingly, that's up 80%. That's a cruise liner, so obviously with travel and everything. Same with EasyJet. So this one, loads of these were free shares actually. And again, thank you if you did use my link and you got yourself a free share, hopefully it's doing well as well. But I went in and bought a load as well because back in obviously March when we weren't allowed to travel, they were down at 500 pounds and they are pretty much double now. And it will just hopefully go from strength to strength with people being able to travel now. 
uh, Elf Beauty, I think that might have been a free one, I don't think I bought this one, and that's doing well, up 20%, can't complain about that one. Equinox Gold, I'm so disappointed in this, but I have only got 30, well it would have been more, it's down almost 50%, so I did buy £60, but I thought gold, that would do well, but obviously not that particular one. Etsy, £141 I've got on there, and it's up 50%, and I bought this one when, back in March or April last year, when I knew people would want to be supporting local businesses, but not being able to go to the shops, so I thought it's a great one to buy, because people aren't going to be able to get them get their goods from local sellers but they might not want to go to Amazon. I'm really pleased with that one. Again, should have bought more but I did have a good feeling about that one. Ford is up 46%, uh, that one's doing really well. Uh, Galliford Try, I just, it was a really cheap share, I went in and it's, it's doing okay, it's not obviously going to make me a millionaire. General Electric is up 23%, I'm pleased with that one. Microsoft is up almost 20% as well, that's doing really well uh, and I've only got £100 in there but yeah, with the General Electric, I've got a lot, because a lot, again, were probably a quarter of those were free shares, and they were only, at the time, I think, yeah, £13 a share, so I went and bought loads as well, because they were really inexpensive, and they are doing really well, so I'm pleased with that one. National Grid uh, is up 4.5%, Next is up 72 that was, I think, the second share I ever bought, and it was when the shops were just reopening, and I, th no, it was when... It was online stuff in March and I thought this is going to do really well and it is, it's up 72% so I'm really pleased with that one. And Peloton, again this is one of those where you look at the market or what's happening in the in the media and they had a really bad news story and their share price dropped considerably. I probably bought that then in May at £83 and now it's £120. It was always going to bounce back but at the time media couldn't affect it so much. Pfizer is down, I thought it would do better than that. I bought that just before they announced that they'd got the go ahead on what they're do, you know giving to people. Royal Dutch, now I'll touch on this in a minute on a different one, but they are up. Smile Direct is down, which is surprising me actually. Snap Inc is up 58%, I don't know how, I don't even know anyone that uses Snap, but yeah, apparently they're doing quite well. Starbucks is 83 pounds, that's up over 10%. Tesla is just, I had some and they split the shares and they sold it all back to me and then I lost loads of money on it and then I reinvested. Really, I shouldn't have done that because they're still down. But as soon as he gets people on the on the moon, then it will go crazy again. Uh, Tilray up 30%, Uber up 2%, Under Armour up 58%. Th these are crazy amounts, guys. Like, you would not get this money in a bank and I know it's volatile and it's not guaranteed. But this is crazy money and obviously you get dividends as well. Um, you may want to check back on my other videos if you're not quite sure of what these things mean. Uh, and I'm aware that I'm racing through, but the last one was half an hour, so I'm trying to really keep it quite slow now. Slow? Fast. <laughs> Unilever is, I've only got three shares, and they're down, but they're quite expensive shares, so if they go up, obviously it's going to be more expensive. Uh, Vanguard, I've got my actual ISA in Vanguard, so I wanted to do it here as well. Virgin Galactic, news story recently where they were talking about taking people to the moon and that went crazy, so as you can see it's up 84%. Walt Disney, I bought these at the beginning of the pandemic when the parks were closed and I just thought people will be back. Disney Plus was released and I knew that would be huge for Disney and it is up 50, almost 50%, so pleased with that one. Wirecard, we just won't get into. I made a lot of money on that one and then I reinvested and I lost it all. I made, I probably made about 70 pounds in one day and then I pulled it all out because I knew they were gonna, they had a massive scandal. And then I thought, I'll just tip, dip my toe in and I got a couple of pounds worth, so. And then Wisdom Tree, this is the one I want to talk to you about. So this is up 124 pounds and I've got 46 shares. And I think with this one, I am really aware, like I wouldn't buy that now because it's not ethical and it's a journey and I I I'm, would do much more kind of eco or environmentally, environment, environmentally friendly um, energy uh, suppliers but that was the first share I ever bought and obviously it's doing really well but would I buy it now no I wouldn't so yeah that's the rundown <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching I hope it was helpful maybe if I do a prop an actual or my or my Vanguard and my other investments as well that might be useful don't forget the links are in the description to get your own free shares your capital is at risk but as you can see it's doing really well. My money in the bank has done nothing compared to that. Like I'm getting 0.01% interest. So for me, that money I've been saving to put into there each month to build on my wealth and to make my money work for me. But obviously you've got to be comfortable to do that yourself. 
Don't forget to check out Jen's channel. I can't wait to be on her channel very soon after the summer. So thank you to her for being here. Hopefully that made sense to you and you might want to go over and check her out. And come and join the budget best, budget best Budget Life group if you want to be involved. It's free to be there and we'd love to have you. And we chat lots of things about money, investing, savings, banks, all the different things over there as well. I'm going to get going. Thank you for watching and being here. If you made it to the end, let me know what your best share is or your most money that you've made on a share. Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you so soon. Bye. <laughs>